So far, we have considered two main routes of transmission. One is infection by coming into contact with something that has the virus on it. The other is infection through droplets emitted in sneezes and coughs. But some experts say there is possibly a third infection route. Experts are now looking at this new infection mechanism as the key to preventing the further spread of the virus. ただの会話の中で感染が広がってとかある程度の距離があっても、それが広がっているような、そういった事例を見ると、通常の飛沫感染だけでは説明できない。非常に小さな粒子ということで、マイクロメーターの粒子、マイクロ飛沫感染等で
This simulation uses only micro droplets. Five minutes later, 10 minutes later. Twenty minutes later, the micro droplets are still floating in place. But there is a way to prevent the stagnation of micro droplets. Opening windows and increasing air circulation is believed to be effective. When you open a window, micro droplets are quickly swept away. They're very small and light, so any airflow will get rid of them. できれば now joined by Mitsuo Kaku, a professor at Tohoku Medical and Pharmaceutical University. He specializes in the prevention and treatment of infectious diseases. We just learned how micro droplets move, but we don't know if this brings a high risk of infection for the new coronavirus. Professor Oshitani, you've been watching the actual spread of the virus. Do you think micro droplets are spreading infection? I don't think airborne infection has occurred. If it had, there would already have been a large scale outbreak here in Japan. We believe most infections have been through large droplets or through contacts. But it is possible that micro droplets can cause short distance transmission in exceptional cases. And this can lead to a cluster. People who have mild symptoms still carry the virus. They might not sneeze or cough or even have a fever. But they still release the virus when they talk loudly or breathe heavily. And by doing so, they release large amounts of the virus, and it's highly likely that this is creating clusters. Professor Kaku, what do you think we should be most careful about when considering micro-droplet infection? You have to avoid the three situations Professor Oshitani pointed out earlier. And what are those? Closed spaces, areas where many people gather, and close-range conversations. You have to avoid all three. And it's necessary to ventilate, particularly in medical facilities, where there could be a lot of micro-droplets. One place that's a really big concern is the waiting room. Here, lots of people are concentrated for long periods of time. People talk while they wait, and this leads to micro droplets in the air. And if ventilation is poor, that could mean infection. So the air needs to be constantly flowing, and we need to make sure people don't come all at the same time. Professor Oshitani, those three situations you listed, do you think they're a big part of the current spread of the virus? We saw from the beginning that the risk of infection was very high in these three situations. They have to be avoided as much as possible. This is very important in our fight against COVID-19. We've been emphasizing this from the start. But even now, these situations haven't been reduced. You see them all the time, even in large venues with lots of people. Japan has been really lucky so far in that we haven't had any large-scale clusters. But you can't just expect that to continue. If we don't do anything, then there will be a large-scale cluster soon, 
and when that happens, our medical system will not be able to handle it. People need to remember this before they plan events or activities and think about how their behavior can prevent a large-scale outbreak here in Japan.